Yes, well, my family, thank God, helped in that respect because they were cosmopolitan. They were, they, they were well-traveled and well-read people, thank heaven. I grew up in their, under their influence. So already I had a, a bit of a head start. Uh, I had to learn not to behave well, actually. I had to go around the other way. It's uh, having been born to a certain kind of, dare I say the awful word, privilege. It's, it's harder to be an artist than it is if you grow up on the streets. And I had more trouble <laughs> I put in my book that I have a, I have a longing for the gutter, <laughs> and I had it when I, from a day one I think. I, I mean, growing up in a, in a in a family who were steadfast about good manners and proper behavior at the dinner table, I couldn't wait to get out and search for the strip joints of Montreal. I longed for the gutter. I had to because. To be an artist, you've got to be free mm -hmm. of all behavior. Mm -hmm. So I think it's harder to grow up that way into the theater than it is if you really have been fighting all your life for survival. And you I said envy those that do in a funny way. I envy that kind of growth, that, that kind of voyage that they took. Coming up from? From the, the gutter. Yeah, from, from poverty and from Well, it's grit. Hunger. You're talking about grit. Yeah, yes, it's yeah. A, yes. And free and freedom yeah. and anger. I didn't know what anger was until well, I was about eighteen. Then I realized that. I think when my mother died, I I, I was angry about that. that. That made me angry. But you've kept the fires burning inside you as an artist. A number of yeah. artists get their fifties and sixties, and the fires dim down and the fires go out. Mm. You haven't. There is something still burning in you. I saw it in the. Oh later. yeah, yeah. That's, 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 you've got How to do keep you keep your, it burning? Well, you must. Um, first of all, you must keep it burning, so you make sure that you do. And secondly, once once you've been angry, I think you, <laughs> I think it stays with you. And you, and it's the old thing that you have to frighten the audience if you're going to be an actor of some stature. You have to be able to frighten the audience. I mean, you have to possess the great temper. All those wonderful critics that wrote about Irving and and other, other great actors of the past who said, and they, Keane particularly, who had the great temper, who could turn an audience to stone, you know. You have to be able to at least attempt to reach that if you're going to play the tragedies. And indeed, if you're going to make a tragedy out of some simple contemporary tale, you have to know how to be angry. Romeo is hopeless unless he can terrify you when he yells at the friar. He's got to show all the rage that, that poetry calls for. And if he can't do that, then he's no Romeo. In the Banish it speaks. Yeah. Um, and I remember Agate often saying, I just saw somebody's Romeo, the old Vic, he was fine, a very pretty to look at, spoke beautifully, no temper, no Romeo. No. Hamlet, the same thing, I think. I was trying to think of a star who didn't have the anger, and I was thinking of Paul Schofield. But then, in a way, Paul Schofield does have a kind of yes. a righteous anger. Under yes, he does. Yes, he does. And I saw his Lear, which was fascinating. Um, you have to say, right, because we were talking about Shirley MacLaine earlier as a great actress. Shirley MacLaine, ha MacLaine has anger. Yeah. Has that oh, fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, she can. Yeah. Uh, Judith Anderson had scared the pants off you as a Medea, and she was really quite horrifically uh, frightening. When Kate she, Reed. When she turned it on. Yes, I think Kate Reed could do, could do that too, yes. Didn't you play with her in Macbeth? Yes, but she was a rather warm and cuddly Lady Macbeth. <laughs> I mean, I was glad to have her around. She, <laughs> she, yes, she did have anger, but she didn't particularly use it as Lady Macbeth. She was more interesting as Lady Macbeth. She, she was sort of a kind of wonderful, warm um, nurse, nanny, that kind of. And then 
would startle you by suddenly saying, come on, get some balls and get moving here. Um, Zoe Caldwell. Yes, Zoe can, her Cleopatra was extraordinary, I think. I was just so sad that no one was able to see it. What do you mean? Well, outside this country. Oh, sure. She never, I mean, that should have gone to London, New York, Paris, Rome, Vienna, <laughs> wherever. I mean, that was a performance of that part that nobody had given for years because uh, she was, I understand Helen Mirren is, was very good, Cleopatra, and she should probably do it again. I don't think she'd be too old. But, uh, but Zoe had all the fire and all the vulgarity and all the humor. Um, Vulgarity. That's what. You, that's when you talk about coming from the gutter. When you talk about grit. The vulgarity. It's, it's a vulgarity. It's, it's essential. You must have. Yeah. You must understand the vulgarity of the of, of that, the vulgar part of your own personality, and you must you must <laughs> work on it. You must bring it to the fore if you're going to play roles that demand it. <clears throat> and all the big roles do. There's always a vulgar moment in everything. There's a vulgar moment in Hamlet. Hamlet has it. You know. What's his vulgar moment? Oh, did you play it very carefully? <laughs> You've caught me. The, the one. No, me. no. When he talks about oh, at, sitting at the play, yes, Ophelia, and also he can be vulgar in, the, in a terribly da dangerous, sort of slightly mad way in the nunnery scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah, speak you of country matters. Mm. Yeah, that's yes. Oh, that's full of all that. Yeah. Um, I hear, remember there's a wonderful bit of business that Edmund Keen did, and maybe you know, know this, in the nunnery scene, he really went absolutely ape and lashed into her like some, I mean, broken doll she was at the end of that scene. I mean, he was so unbelievably cruel to her. And he storms off, and she collapses on the ground, but before she has her moment of speech, that beautiful speech she says about, oh, what a noble mind is here or thrown. Keane made his re-entrance, came on again behind her and put his arm on her, just stroked her hair very gently, so gently, and left. Son of a bitch. I mean, she had nowhere to go, of course. Wow. But what an extraordinary bit of business. 